All right. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Victor Predes Colonia. I'm part of the outbound product management team for our asset management business unit. Very excited to have everybody here today for another one of our live events, this time focusing around supercharging your time to value with Tokyo. If you haven't already registered for some of our events and upcoming events, uh, please feel free to scan the QR code and we'll also throw in a link in the chat. There's a lot of different events coming up in the next couple of weeks before we close out the year. And you'll also be able to start looking at events we have rolling in in 2023. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. Uh, first and foremost, some of the information here is privileged and confidential. So when we get to the Q&A session, we might have some forward-looking statements. We might make some other uh, comments uh, that we want you to bear in mind. Related to that is a second announcement, is that some of this information is forward-looking again. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Again, a big welcome to everybody. This is another one of our events. We're focused around bringing our commitment to you to help all of our customers deploy, adopt, and achieve value faster with their investments in ServiceNow. And this time we're gonna focus a little bit on the newest and latest features of the Tokyo release. And to do that, I brought on a couple of friends to help me. You might know me and you might know Michael. We've been putting on these events for quite some time now. We're part of the outbound team. But if you haven't already met Akash or Nirali, they're both from our product management team here within the asset management business unit. So Akash and Nirali, I see that you're out there. Thank you for joining. Thanks for making the time. Thanks for having us. All right. Yeah, of course. Here's what we're gonna to cover today. Four quick topics. Uh, first and foremost, what's new in, in the Tokyo release? A quick overview of that. But then I'm gonna jump into some quick dives and deep dives uh, looking at the SAM success portal SAM Health Dashboard, and the Asset Executive Dashboard. These are three, three features of which Akash and Raleigh are going to help demonstrate and walk us through those together. Please submit any related questions you have in the QA form and make any comments in the chat. A couple announcements before we get started. Uh, let's stay laser focused on the topics of the day. There's a lot of different features that are out there in Tokyo, but let's focus on the three that we're going to talk about today. Uh, share your time with others. Contribute what you know. If you've already started playing around with some of these features, we would love to hear back from you. And at the end of this, please fill out our quick survey. Your feedback is definitely important to us. All right. So without further ado, let's kick it off with the SAM Tokyo release. So for the Tokyo release, the team took inspiration from the Shinkansen. It's a network of a highly efficient and lightning fast bullet trains that span all over Japan. So in the same vein, the Tokyo release is really full of outcomes-driven solutions, things that we want our customers to drive consistently high value for their organization while getting them to those values fast. And as you all know, ServiceNow probably has a lot of different host solutions. And within SAM, there's a bunch of solutions that are really dealt towards driving value. You know, things like cost reduction, risk reduction, high efficiency improvements, and the, the list goes on. But within Tokyo, we have four key bucket areas that we focused on. The first is enhancing the user experience. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. Cloud support is another area we did focus on as well that involves bringing in new SaaS integrations. So if you're not familiar with that, we actually have another session coming around the corner. I believe it's on Wednesday to talk about SaaS integrations. We always continue to invest in our perpetual licenses. So things like Microsoft SQL optimization, bringing in infrastructure reports so you get an overview of your Microsoft estate, expanding on the license metrics within the IBM suite. And quite recently, we've been verified as an Oracle middleware uh, verified vendor. So other, other things to just accolades that we have. And as always, we're continuously expanding our Better Together stories with the other applications across our platform. So again, diving into what we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna focus on the enhanced user experience. So to do that, I'm going to turn it over to Akash. And before we, we jump into our first question, Akash, I want to take a quick poll. Maybe this might help a few of the folks out here just to get an understanding of where everybody is. So here's the question. What family release are you currently using at your organization? San Diego, Tokyo, Rome, are you Quebec or earlier? We'll give it another 
15 seconds here. Okay. All right, so it's it's pretty uh, pretty clear to me. Everybody or majority of everyone is uh, in the San Diego release, which is not too far away from Tokyo. So this might be of interest to you to see what we have here in the Tokyo release under the enhanced user experience. It is great to see a quarter of the people on the call on Tokyo though, and, and we're, we're really excited to see that. That is great, that is great. Okay. So moving on then. I'm going to yeah. ask you, Akash, a quick question on um, on the SAM success portal. So this is one of our features in the enhanced user experience. Why don't you introduce us to Nicole? That sounds great. Yeah, so uh, Nicole's a software asset manager. Um, she's responsible for you know basically the uh, the software estate within her organization, uh, a global financial uh, company. Um, but really, what she's currently focused on is trying to identify those uh, successes within uh, her software program um, that she's been able to, to have over the past year and, and continue to have and kind of track those and be able to identify those um, and show uh, that up to her leadership for the continuous um, uh, dollars that are spent uh, to support the software program, uh, the software asset management program uh, within her uh, organization and, and to continue to build on that, right? So she's trying to get some of the justification, you know, what are what are some of the, the wins that we've had within our software program to help us justify, you know, the resources that we need and, and continue to build upon that. Um, so really when, when she's looking at the, the system, you know, you can get uh, savings information from let's say reclamation candidates but there's so many other things that software asset managers do um, with other teams, procurement teams, your CMDB teams, um, you know, process folks that you do within the platform or outside of the platform to, that help you uh, identify those successes that help uh, you know, reduce cost uh, within the organization. And so that's what she's trying to, she's trying to find a place uh, for a lot of that information and be able to, to track that going forward. Yeah. So let me I, go I ahead. Think, and... I, I think another way to look at it, Akash, and correct me if I'm wrong, is if your boss comes and asks you, "What have you been working on? What 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 have we? How have we been getting value from this investment? Where can we look to?" That that's kind of the landing page for for that answer to that question. Yeah, absolutely. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, well, um, while we're looking at at the the slides here, but you know, basically, you know, what I'm going to show within the uh, the platform as well is you know, we created this SAM success portal. Um, and really what we're trying to get here with the, the success portal is, um, and continue to build upon that in future releases, uh, are uh, a way to be able to track uh, goals, activities related to those goals, um, a quick dashboard of, you know, what kind of uh, goals are, you know, in a draft state, an open state, pending review, uh, what kind of categorization do we have uh, associated to the goals? So we'll we'll uh, kind of deep dive into that as well. But it's a quick way to kind of show, you know, where you are from a success uh, within, you know, all the different successes that you've had, all the different wins that you've had within your organization um, for around the your SAM program, your, your software asset management program. So your completed goals that you've had over the past year. Uh, how much you've saved, um, and again, this is information that you're that you're filling in. Um, in the future, we are looking to drive that, uh, derive that from different records that might be within um, the software platform uh, as we continue to 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 build upon that uh, within the uh, ServiceNow platform. But uh, today, this is just information that we're tracking, so it gives you a place to kind of fill that in, and so on and so forth. So, let me quickly just. Still share here. And we'll take a look. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. I do, yeah. Um, so what we have here, this is our, uh, the success portal, the software asset success portal. And as you can see within the screenshot that we had on the slides, um, you know, these are the different KPIs or dashboards, uh, widgets that we have. Um, one is you know open success goals. So the, the currently open ones in draft, in progress, um, 
that that we have that we can drill down into, uh, kind of see where they are from a, a process or from a progress perspective. Um, you know, how many success activities do we have and who are those assigned to? So this gives us the ability to kind of track this overall success goal. So in this case, uh, improving our, our vendor audit defense process. Um, and we have different categories we can put that into. So we can track that from a, a category perspective. You'll see that on the dashboard again. Um, we may have an owner associated to it, our pro uh, projected start and end dates. Um, when we actually get into it, what were our, uh, the actual start and end dates? And then our projected savings against our actual savings when we, when we do complete that, uh, we'll want to fill in the actual savings so we can track you know, how we're doing overall from a, um, a SAM program and, and the different uh, savings that we've had. As far as activities, so these are, these are built off the task table. Um, so they are, they're regular tasks that would show up uh, in, let's say, my work queue or my group's work queue. Um, and they can be assigned out to different individuals, kind of help you uh, task those, those activities out um, to the different teams. Uh, let's say this is a procurement team or from a process improvement, maybe it's your, your business strategy team or, or something like that, uh, that you want them to kind of help you with um, providing uh, some necessary inputs. And so you can kind of track who's helping you. And, and obviously it gives you a chance, you know, when um, your manager comes to you and, and asks, you know, uh, what kind of successes you've had, what, what wins you've had this year, you kind of give kudos to those that, that have helped you along the way as well. So um, it's a good way to kind of track all this information and, and give uh, our software asset managers something to, to look at um, and, and be able to track against. Um, if we just take a look also down here, some of our completed success savings. So again, we drop those into these different buckets and we can see, you know, what are we, what have we been kind of focused on over the past year? Um, if you want to do this within the past six months or whatever past quarter, you can update your time period and, and adjust these dashboards accordingly based off of that time period. And then the other thing that we'll be able to show, um, uh, here in a little bit, uh, Nirali is going to show the ITM executive dashboard. We do uh, have a couple widgets that that uh, look at this data as well that are presented to our uh, to those uh, users as well. So whomever is uh, your executive teams or or you know your senior managers, whomever is using the um, ITM executive dashboard, they'll be able to kind of drill down and see some of this information, and, and those are highlighted there also. Oh, this is great, Akash. So, I mean, just looking at this at a high level, you have a way, a place to actually put your goals in into a, a record form, right? So you can look back on it. it looks like you have the ability to uh, look at your goals tied to your savings and get some dollar values associated with your accomplishments of goals. And I think at the at the very beginning, I also saw kind of projected projected goals that you have upcoming, right? So you can kind of forecast and and plan in advance, what are some of those upcoming success goals that you have? So you don't have to solve everything in the first mm -hmm. month or even in the first half of the year, right? You can actually plan your goal and, and, and do that throughout the course of the year. So this really helps, in my opinion, as you're implementing, it helps you also to um, get the right exercise and um, how would you say this, the, the, the right experience of project managing a SAM, a SAM, SAM uh, program. Yeah, um, you know, if you're looking at this at the beginning of your uh, implementation, you may want to set up some of these goals and start tracking it from that perspective. But then on a yearly basis, you know, when you're meeting with your management teams, um, you're identifying those areas that you want to focus on. This is another uh, place to be able to kind of track that and then yeah. update that uh, against these goals uh, and and be able to you know report that back to your your management team. So it's a really easy way to kind of keep track of these different goals, um, things that you. I mean, we have a lot of things that we do, uh, different activities that we do within our SAM programs, uh, within ITAM in general. And so this is kind of um, a way to be able to identify those and track against it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And all of these widgets are kind of out of the box. Is there anything that you can add or, or change 
with respect to the widgets or right now these are kind of the main widgets yeah, these, KPIs? These are the main widgets, the KPIs that, that we're tracking against. Uh, at, you know, we have been looking at uh, different items uh, in future releases that, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, being able to track against uh, records within the, the um the ServiceNow platform, you know, let's say, you know, certain entitlements uh, contributed to that savings uh, contracts that might have contributed to the savings, things like that, to be able to track against that. Um, but really right now, these are these are the widgets that we have today. Awesome, awesome. A quick question that I have just to differentiate the two, I see on the top right there, create success activity and create success goal. Can you just clarify the difference between the two and how would I use each one of those? Yep. Uh, so our success goals, uh, that's basically the, um, the overall arching goal that we, that we want to create uh, to manage against. And then we would have okay. different activities associated to it um, for that particular goal. So a Got goal it. can have one to many activities. And Got obviously, it. it's taken a little longer than I'd want it to. But I can drill down into, let's say, um, one of our success goals here. Uh, and then mm -hmm. you'll see like the same activities if I uh, want to create a new one here, I can create that same activity directly against this goal here. So I would okay. create that additional activity here. Perfect. Perfect. I got it. So maybe one goal yeah. is getting, getting ready for a particular audit. What are the individual activities that need to be done? Import entitlements. That's activity one. Get yeah. your, get your software installations in, in, in line. Activity two, things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, that's fantastic. There's another feature that we have, which is the SAM health checks. And Akash, do you want to walk us through that again? And maybe looking at uh, from Nicole's perspective, how does she stay on top of delivering value to her, to her organization, leveraging health checks? Yeah. So again, Nicole being the, uh, the software asset manager for this global financial company, it's very easy to kind of get lost within um, all the different configuration, let's say configuration or data setup uh, that you might need to have, uh, especially for some of the very complex type of software licensing, right? SQL Server, Oracle uh, databases, uh, Windows Server, things like that. The, the, the more complex pieces, making sure that your entitlements have been created with the, the right agreement type, that you may have uh, software assurance associated to it, and that's, that's correctly configured. Um, so, what she's wanting to make sure is, you know, she's looking at her license, her reconciliation, the license workbench. Um, she's not exactly sure it looks correct. She needs a way to be able to kind of take a look and make sure that the configurations have been done correctly uh, within the SAM, uh, within the SAM application, the the module uh, for those type of uh, complex licenses. You know, and this is kind of gives us a way to. Uh, have a proactive way to be able to check um, these different configurations before, let's say, uh, calling, you know, uh, or, or submitting a case ticket with high or something like that. This, this is kind of a, hey, let's go double check that based off the instant scan and things like that. Um, how can I, how can I pre proactively uh, see that information? So what we have is, as, again, as part of success portal, as part of the success portal, um, we've created these health checks. Um, it's an, a store app that is available. Um, I believe the compatibility on it is, is San Diego. It was um, it's for Tokyo, but I think it's backwards compatible to San Diego as well. Um, but these are health checks uh, that uh, we deliver as part of this the store app. Uh, currently, these health checks there's about four of them. Uh, at, as we develop more. Um, through our the store app release process, we'd be able to deliver more of these uh, different health checks. Um, but this gives us a way to kind of highlight those configurations that have been done that are may not have been done correctly. Um, it also gives us a way to be able to task out um, based off of those findings. Task out, you know, hey, I've got these three entitlements that don't have software assurance on them, uh, or I've got these relationships uh, to this VM that are not correct, maybe it's a discovery issue. Um, and so, you know, test that out to our discovery teams to go check, uh, check on those patterns and, and so on and so forth. So it gives us a way to be able to kind of pinpoint 
where uh, where we might be having some issues uh, that could cause reconciliation, could cause uh, license compliance, uh, uh, incorrect license compliance uh, to be reported. Oh, that's great. So again, Let's take a look. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna still share. And again, just let me know that you can see my screen. You should be able to see the health check uh, tab. Yes, I do. Currently, I see it. Awesome. So uh, as you can see, these are um, I, on the software success portal, there's a health check tab. Um, within that health check tab, we have some different widgets in here. One of them is the, the different health checks that are available. Currently, uh, out of box uh, within Tokyo, we have uh, one for SQL Server, Windows Server, some of our SaaS configurations, and then just an, an overall general uh, uh, Microsoft um, uh, check as well. So a couple of specific ones, uh, and then one for uh, just in general uh, around Microsoft. We do have uh, an Oracle database one uh, as well, uh, as well as the other Oracle products coming out. Uh, so those are available as well um, very shortly. Um, this may not have been, I think those might actually be available now. Let me just have to double check. Uh, as far as uh, health checks by priority, so um, depending on how uh, important uh, these particular health checks, the findings uh, that we that we got, we do prioritize those, um, uh, whether it be a high priority or, or um, a low priority or something like that, uh, we do try and prioritize those. Um, the health check score, so this is, this is interesting, this is... Um, Based off the scans that we do, it, uh, if you have, let's say there are 10 scans, if you pass, let's say six of those scans, you would get a health check of, of 60%, right? So uh, this is really based off of the different scans and the percentage of past uh, scans uh, that you have uh, based off of those, those health checks that have been run uh, uh, at the moment. Yeah, I think that's um, really interesting there that you, you're able to as you said, over time, more scans will, will come out and you have different areas to check the health of your configuration. But even out of the box, you know, you can run those scans and just see, hey, how healthy am I with these initial scans out of the box? And if you get a health score, that's an indicator of, I have some work to do, I have some education that I need to get around this area. I need to config, reconfigure things before I before I say, hey, there's something wrong here, right? It's, it's probably how something was configured. So this is a really interesting uh, feature here. Yeah, and it, it could it could just be that hey for um, for the the software models that we have we haven't used discovery maps associated to them right it could be something that simple and and uh, that may cause uh, you not to get uh, the appropriate uh, downgrades information or yeah. you know I don't have an enterprise agreement associated to that particular entitlement uh, or software yeah. assurance associated so. All of those things kind of add up. And so those kind of little checks really do help software asset managers kind of pinpoint where the issue might be uh, as far as why is this reconciliation not looking correct? Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah the, power, sure. the power there is the visibility, right? The visibility of where, where, am, I, where am I having issues? I think that's, because there's a lot of that a software asset manager is focused on, right? Not just compliance and goals, but it's like, Hey, do I have everything technically sound? Uh, so this is really helpful in that regard. Yeah, and the other thing to kind of take a look at as well is it may just be that, hey, I don't have a credential associated with that particular SQL Server box, right? Like I don't have the right credential there for that Windows Server. Uh, and so something fixing something like that could resolve a lot of these different findings. So once you resolve that, you rerun the health scan and then you kind of see where your findings are at that point, right? It may close this, this overall finding and then you don't have to do it. So you might have initially, you might have a lot of different findings associated to it, but then fixing one of, uh, one of those findings all of a sudden fixes, you know, the other a hundred that are sitting there as well, right? So oh, yeah. uh, this really helps us kind of pinpoint where that issue might, might reside. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, the, the the numbers can, in some cases, be a little bit scary if they're very high in in, in value, and, or, you know, numerically speaking. But they may be tied to one another, right? So once you hit one one uh, issue, it, it might reduce substantially other areas of the of the configuration. Yep. And then one last thing uh, to kind of point out is 
you know, customers can take a look. Like if they drill down into one of these these health scans, they can see the different checks that are being done. They this is this is available to them to be able to kind of see what that information, what kind of information is it querying. Um, and then so like if I drill down into one of these, it gives them like you know a little bit of the description of that particular check, what the resolution should be, links them out to some documentation. And also even shows them what the the condition is. What is the check that is happening? And they could run this as well, right? So individually, like they have a little more understanding of what the what the background process is for all of this. And so that that's another easy way to. And I'm not saying it's easy, but it's a, another way to be able to kind of take a look and see, hey, what am I missing here? Right. So yeah, it ex explains the why and the how. And I mean, it gives exactly. you the ability to train your team, right? Not just click a button yep. and have to fix this issue, but really understanding why this is the case so that in the future, we're not going to encounter this issue, right? We, we train ourselves. Yeah. And it helps not just our customers, but it helps our partners, our implementers, you know, our, our own expert services teams, you know, to be able to kind of, hey, like this is the check that they're doing. This is the things that we need to make sure that we're setting up correctly. Uh, and they yeah. can run this, you know, anytime. So once you've imported those entitlements, you've run reconciliation, run the health check against it, you know, and uh, and you'd be able to kind of see those those checks uh, and just make sure you're doing uh, you're in a, in a healthy score here. That's fantastic. That's awesome. I really like that. Thanks, Akash. Thank you. All right. So Nirali, we've seen that uh, Nicole has been able to provide value up the ladder using these Tokyo features, right? One is to kind of talk about goals and, and making sure that you're hitting all of those goals. The other is making sure that you have everything configured and you're technically accurate. But what can maybe say Nicole's boss do? Um, someone at, at the executive level, how can they get uh, value from, from Sam? Yeah, thanks, Victor. Um, hi, everyone. Great question. Before we deep dive into Nicole's boss and what she would like to see, maybe we can do a quick poll. I just want to get a quick sense of how many of the customers who are joining the webinar today have any of our products. So if you look at the screen, you can see we have SAM Professional, we have SAM Enterprise that includes Cloud Insights, uh, we have Hardware Asset Management, and the newest, newest uh, product that we have, which is the Enterprise Asset Management. So I see the poll going up to majority of them have SAM Pro, which is great. I see HAM Pro building up as well. That's exciting. Great, so I think majority of you have SAM Pro, HAM Pro almost 50%, I would say, and then SAM Enterprise, so maybe a subset has got um, SAM Enterprise. So SAM Enterprise, if you're not familiar with it, it is all the functionality that you get with SAM Professional, uh, which is a software asset management professional product, as well as Cloud Insights. And then Enterprise Asset Management is the newest product that we've launched and um, I would highly encourage everyone to definitely look at our documentation, learn more about those products. But going back, Victor, to your question around what Nicole's boss would like to see. So let's talk about the persona. So Nicole's uh, boss, Susan, is now leading this huge organization that manages all of IT asset management, right? So when we say asset management, her she's got team who's looking at software asset management, hardware asset management, um, and then she's also got a team who is managing all her cloud resources. Um, but for Susan, it's always become very difficult and challenging uh, when she really wants to learn about the KPIs in terms of how the overall um, asset estate is doing, right? Because if you look at these products individually, uh, we do have dashboards that reflect the core KPIs. So for example, um, software asset management has got the software asset workspace, Cloud Insights has got their own dashboard and hardware asset management's also got a workspace where you can see these critical KPIs. But what really is missing is this view that she's really looking for, right? We want this one view where she can get to see the entire estate 
get to see the entire asset estate, see how our products are doing. Uh, look at the core KPIs, like what is a spend looking like, right? Across all the three product offerings that she has. So what we wanted to do was keeping this in mind, this view of a single platform in mind, uh, we've built the asset executive dashboard. Uh, as the name explains, uh, asset management executive dashboard does comprise of hardware asset management, software asset management, and cloud insights. So over here, you can see is a brief screenshot of what that dashboard looks like. Um, it is in its own executive workspace. Um, to get access to this, you definitely need to make sure that you have the SKU for the respective product. So when I say that, for example, if you don't have SKU for hardware asset management professional, all your KPIs would just reflect maybe software and cloud if you have the SAM enterprise bundle, right? So as long as you have the SKU for either software asset management professional or the enterprise or hardware asset management, you will be able to access this dashboard. Um, so the biggest advantage, if you really want to leverage this dashboard, if you really want your executives to just not have the need to go into different workspaces to understand what the KPIs are, or oftentimes being able to compare what the spend looks like across software versus hardware, across um, cloud resources, you really want to take advantage of this asset management um, executive dashboard. So for that, again, you want to make sure that you have all the uh, product offerings um, in within your organization as well. Um, so this view has really helped Susan now to track everything she wants to know about all the three product offerings that she's got in her organization, right? Uh, what we've done is we've gone to this critical exercise of understanding what the core KPIs are. What is it that Susan would like to know on a day-to-day basis or maybe even um, let's say quarterly, right? If she has to report to her executives and what is it that she needs? So all she has to do is go to the asset management executive dashboard. Um, she can see all these um, core KPIs that we've listed here. She has the ability to filter by product as well. And in a brief moment, when I give you the demo, you would be able to see that. So she can now slice and dice the data and really focus on what she wants to know more about. Uh, so with that, if you don't mind, Victor, can I quickly? Um, Please, yeah. We'd love to see it. Hey, right here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let me share my screen. And you should be able to see the executive dashboard. Yes, I do. Awesome. Great. So like I mentioned, this is that one-stop place where you will see everything across all the three product offerings. Um, again, in my instance, I do have software, hardware, and cloud insights. That's why I'm seeing all the data. Uh, we've also included the success goals that Akash just walked us through because that's important from SAM point of view and understanding it, uh, understanding what your health checks are. Uh, and later, I, we might even expand it to other product offerings. But this is where I want to say that we've tried to get the KPIs that really are going to be meaningful to you and pull them all onto one dashboard. So for example, you can see the missing hardware assets, right? Now, this is very important for hardware asset management because you want to see where is that spend that is really uh, not being tracked as part of your lost assets. So you want to track down where these assets are, probably try to recover it or see if there is another alternative so that you can reduce that spend, right? You might want to um, discontinue the lease maybe for those assets. So that's why we want to give you that visibility into those missing hardware assets that you have. Um, asset fulfillment time is another great one, right? So what this really tells you is, how many days does it take for maybe the IT admin or the procurement team to really fulfill your request for a piece of hardware or maybe a software, right? From the day you request to the day it's actually getting fulfilled. And then this tells me that, wow, if I have something that's 
probably in the 31 plus days, then I should really go revisit the uh, processes that I have in place. And what is it that's taking so long uh, for these assets to get fulfilled, right? So getting all this visibility is very hard when the data is not in one place. And that's why you can see that all the important ones are really on this one dashboard. Very similar to other dashboards, you have the ability to drill down as well. So for example, um, and if you refer to our documentation too, we have explanation of what comprises of uh, spend when we talk about software versus hardware versus cloud, right? Just to give you a clear example for spend, all the definitions are gonna be very different. For software, it's really the cost that you have for all your rights or the entitlements that you've purchased. Um, similarly, for hardware, it is the cost of all the hardware assets. And for cloud, it is what you've been spending on your cloud resources. So now having the ability to actually drill down into each one of this to understand where this data is coming from, you will be able to do that from this dashboard. So for example, if I were to click on the total spend on software, you can see that it tells me based on all the entitlements, what my total spend is across my publishers and the various products. So given this in mind, again, you're able to slice and dice the data the way you want. If you just want to focus on software, you can just select software. And when you apply, it's going to refresh your widget to reflect only what's related to software asset management. Um, so having said that, I would say this has been one of the uh, um, the most valued feature in the sense you're able to now combine all the views, no need to go into different workspaces, especially at an executive level where you really don't have the time, but you just want to know what the meat is and what your um, asset estate looks like. Um, so with that, I would highly encourage um, each one of you to look at the documentation, learn more about this feature. Uh, and see how this can fit into your um, uh, into your organization. Um, so with that, um, I think, Victor, I will pass it back on to you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Nirali. Uh, just a quick comment on that. I think that's fascinating that you're able to consolidate all that information there and kind of leverage what you want to talk about with as an executive, right? So you might have meetings that you're attending or meetings that you're facilitating and you want to talk to just the hardware team. You can focus on all the high level takeaways from the hardware group. If you want to focus on software, you can drill down even further and look at, like you said, those success goals that Nicole and Akash uh, demonstrated. What are the things that we need to talk about there for that goal for that goal and for that meeting, right? So it really helps in the facilitation of meetings. So I think that's great. I appreciate that, Nirali. Yeah. yeah. So we have time now to uh, talk about some questions. I saw some rolling through in the Q&A forum. Thanks Akash for answering some of those, but uh, Michael, there might be some that we still have yet to address or, or ones that we want everybody to uh, benefit from the answer from. Yeah, 100%. So thank you all for taking a look at some three really exciting Tokyo features that can help you get time to value. I see the questions have been coming in. Um, one that pops up quickly is um, Nirali, I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, if there's a now learning course already available for the asset management executive dashboard um, or if that's being rolled out uh, as part of a, a general um, Tokyo learning course. Yeah, Michael, on that one, we'll have to follow up with the learning team to see if that is on the agenda. Um, so we'll have to um, just ask around and see if that's going to be um, offered as a course. Okay. Yeah. Another thing we could do for that one, Michael, is when we post the recording, uh, we can have a, a comment in the uh, in the blog post on the community of if there's a training, here's the link, and if there's not, um, when, when it should be expected to come out. Fantastic. Akash, I know you were active in answering questions here. I think one that could be good clarity is... Um, a question from Dale on the health check scans. So I know we spoke about this a bit, but can you just rearticulate what is meant by a scan um, and what drives that data uh, that you're seeing in the dashboard? Yeah, so this uses uh, instant scans. Um, so uh, as part of the instant scans, there's uh, a number of, of checks uh, that uh, have been created. And so those individual, um, I, I guess, health checks, um, that are specific to SAM 
Sam Pro. So um, they're related to to the Sam Pro app. Um, and so that is what ends up showing up uh, as part of um, the dashboard, uh, your health check score, and so on and so forth. So each one of those individual sweet checks that uh, that you saw on the screen when we were running through that, um, uh, like those individual sweet checks have different checks uh, or different uh, queries that it runs to to look at what whatever is part of that check. So you know, for SQL Server, it might run a query um, for you know, are your VMs do your VMs have uh, the correct relationships created? Um, do you have software assurance uh, associated to uh, the entitlements for those uh, for Windows Server or SQL Server? You know, things like that. So, um, so that's really what it's it's checking against. And you can drill down. And you can take a look at each one, and then you can execute that individual scan if you want to run it um, individually. You can do that. Uh, from that sweet check um, uh, uh, dashboard uh, widget, or you could go into instant scan and, and run a full scan um, as well. And that would that would update uh, those widgets as well. Great. And and when you and when you when you get a scan and you don't pass the scan, say you're not, you know, um, I assume as you showed earlier, that you can click in and see exactly which one you didn't pass, and maybe can start to follow some uh, best practices on how to rectify that. Yeah, so like if you drill down into that particular, and I can I can pull it back up if we if we need to. But if you if you drill down into that that particular uh, check, um, it will identify you know what is the resolution to uh, you know what are resolution steps to um, fix this particular issue. Uh, it'll drill you down. You can actually go to let's say the entitlement specific entitlement that it is uh, it is looking at. Um, that has the issue. So it does link all of that together. So uh, it makes it a little easier for you to be able to get to it. Awesome. Thank you, Akash. Uh, we have a question from Philip, and I know we've had, we, we're not, it might not be um, able to answer on this call, but, um, and Akash, let me know. If Philip does say, how is ServiceNow adding the ability to match subscriptions to user entitlements and clarified that he wants to know how to physically get entitlements to match to subscriptions. Um, that currently requires integration efforts with publisher portals um, or websites. And now about 65% is subscription-based, not discovery of installs on PCs. Is this something that we might want to take offline? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we might need to. I don't know, Nirali, I know you've done a lot of stuff on the SaaS side. If you want to take a look at that as well. Yeah, on uh, that one, I want to understand, are we talking about pulling in entitlements automatically through the APIs based on the mm. SAS integrations? Um, because we can't really match the entitlements. Whenever you create the entitlements, you're going to say that I've created 10 unless you actually do allocations, right? Why allocations is the only way to say that this particular entitlement or a right from this entitlement is to be used for this particular user. So through allocations, you are able to match um, to the subscriptions. But if you don't create allocations, then think of it as just like a pool of entitlements and we consume it for the subscriptions that we've pulled in. So if you can maybe explain your use case a little more, uh, we would be able to help you further. I will say, since we had the safe harbor slide uh, previously, that in Utah we are looking at um, consumption-based rules that um, allow you to, or you know, we call it sharing rules as well, allows you to identify, uh, let's say, <clears throat> a particular cost center or department that is that is allowed to use that entitlement. So um, that could also help with that particular use case as well. All right. Well, I know based on our poll at the upfront, um, for many of you, uh, you know, who have not yet upgraded to Tokyo, these are brand new features to offer um, you to provide even greater value to your organization. So you might not have questions at the moment. Um, and I encourage you uh, in the upcoming slides on resources to take a look, see, play around with some of these tools and, um, and start to and start to learn about some of the Tokyo release uh, features that we have just for you guys. With that, uh, Victor, I think we can move on to the resources here.
Sure, sounds good. Thanks everybody for the questions and thanks Akash and Narali for addressing those. So some of the resources we have um, to, to share with you and we'll be posting those on the community today are a couple of white papers and user guides. So the first and foremost are links to our product documentation release notes. So when you're looking at upgrading from San Diego, Rome or Quebec, uh, you'll get to see what are some of the different uh, uh, attributes and, and new things in the product. So you'll get to see that through the product documentation site. We'll also be linking our software asset management implementation, a best practice guide, kind of help you understand what are some of the pitfalls and things that you should catch uh, as you're implementing SAM. And then in, with respect to trainings, there's a several trainings that we have. A lot of you out there have probably been familiar with the SAM fundamentals training. Uh, so we're not gonna get into too much of that, but that's really where you wanna start. But then as you move on, uh, you might wanna look at different areas like normalization, discovery basics, uh, reconciliation, troubleshooting, import basics, all of these integral parts of being successful with SAM. So again, these trainings are out there on the now learning. And a lot of these outside of the fundamentals uh, are anywhere between 15 to 25 minutes uh, worth of training, kind of click through. And they also have attachments in there of information that you can download. And last but not least, um, I talked about the community. It is our home base. It's an area where all of you will get a lot of resources uh, and links to materials that we continuously pump out, uh, but it, is, it should be your landing guide, right? Um, there's a, a summary out there, the welcome guide or the getting started guide that has a summary of how to set up for success with all of those links to the trainings that I spoke about earlier, as well as other links to resources that we think are very helpful as you start your journey with Sam. I wanna thank everybody for their time. I hope you had a nice uh, meeting with us got a lot of new information or excited about Tokyo like we are. We hope you have a good week. Stay focused. Thanks, everyone.